Being in black, folks, <coughs> no matter what, the close objects bleed through even the cloud cover. This is Hawaii, and you can see this planet, that planet. Not worried about what it is because some constellation or, or the close objects that we have, that. And since the time is of 1739 in the evening, that the idea this may quite possibly be the, see that little tail on that there? That's one of the objects that rotates around Rigel, Cantaris B, or Proxima Centauri, or Rigel A, as we noticed as you checked the video out yesterday, okay? So you can see these things still even bleed through the telescope when it's got heavy, heavy cloud cover. And uh, the Hawaii cam's got heavy, heavy cloud cover. We'll see if we can get anything that's clear. But it just it's just really bad all the way through. As you can see here, I just fast forward through, and it's just, you, they really don't not seeing nothing in daylight. They just nothing. A subject for a minute or so, I'll start chopping into minute sections, is the idea of the time, okay? This is when our supergiant sun, which is centered pretty much on Earth's axis below the pole, because all this stuff is from Sant uh, Antarctica, okay, from the south. And I'm going to give you some directions and some sunlight, and I even found a clock that was wrong. <coughs> Might be done on purpose from whoever owns the ship or somebody's trying to pull you that or human error on a date on a picture. But we get the aurora right here in the North Pole only known of much to get in pictures that much, okay? Now, if somebody's got some history of Aurora getting caught on pictures in Antarctica, then let's see them, okay? But this is Antarctica at the uh, Haley Research Station webcam, okay? So we are getting pole change, folks, i.e. Lovejoy came around and changed magnetism on the sun or at least on the comet itself. That's why when the tail is going forward yes and then when it drops back to earth the head will be back to normal how we normally see comets but lovejoy is going away and ie ie not a comet and also showing up today on lasco 3 this is very scientific news blast folks okay yes we have found some planets because these are not anything this close to the sun even if the U u.s or any nations combined or any separate nation has something that can go up there the Earth is but a speck, folks. Just the Earth itself is just a speck of grain up here, okay? So these are planets and orbiters, okay? So they even do the same thing to these planets down there that we get in these orbs that we are seeing at the South Pole. Now I'm going to zoom in on these, but you got to get a look on this in my last video, this in my last video, and we got another one, folks, last video. And we got this other object stuff here. This stuff's starting to come clear. Okay, folks, pretty much going away. That is probably the sun, the last little bit of light. They get 23 to 24 hours of daylight down there at Antarctica. And as you can see, 2300 hours. Okay, and then Rigel Cantaris B, Proxima Centauri, and Rigel A's light start coming up here. Okay, more than three suns. Okay, and then this object is one of these that you see that we will zoom in on that shot that we just have recently of Lasco 3. We'll show you. And as you see, you can see the rotation there on that object. Okay, okay, you can see the schnot nozzles on that thing. Okay. Let me zoom in on it real fast. And it's just like a disco 80s and but way back 1920 something the disco ball was invented or 1919, 1909, maybe even earlier than that, okay? As you can see the nodes on this thing going in front of Rigel Cantaris B for damn sure, Rigel Cantaris A, Proxima Centauri, and it comes up straight centered or pretty much below south and because the sun comes up in the east, i.e. over there and uh, basically, no, that was west. This is east over here. So it comes out south, central, east, okay? This is where it comes up at, okay? Let me zoom into a 1,000, and then I'll take you back to Lasco 3. And also watch, when, when I show you the film here, the idea that the shadows are in a different spot. So they wrote that this rotates around the sun. I mean, Rigel Cantaris B. And there's 600%. Let's get to a 1,000. Just like mass 22 is on the sun, this object rotates and pops up in front of Rigel Cantaris B and basically helps us protect us from some dangerous rays when it comes down to it, okay? So, and also creates some dangerous rays on the outsides, but the idea that can you imagine if we got full blast of this all the time because it's Proxima Centauri, Rigel Cantaris B, and Rigel A. Okay, so watch the clock and then watch the old videos and you'll see the idea that before we've seen it on the other side where we get... Uh, what we're going to have in a second coming up, which would be that there, okay? And you can trust me on the clock, and I'll just keep going on that there, up there, okay? 
I'll go a little bit more as you see the clock okay so the idea there you go and I'll just step so it's coming in behind on this on basically last evenings so early early this morning because this is UTC time okay so basically eight hours in central time and uh, 10 by the time you get to California time 10 hour difference okay six hours East Coast I could be wrong on that but the idea that it is they're way ahead of us okay 68 hours of difference during the season Zulu check just watch Zulu time okay so moving away so we know that it comes now this is back to the Sun and that was Rigel Cantaris B Proxima Centauri that we just looked at a little bit ago okay so this is the Sun and we'll go in and zoom on this so check out the next video you got to watch the next video okay we'll add this stuff into the zooms in on that in the next video now when you go ahead and go to uh, fireball the idea during the daytime okay 1209 is like 6 a.m. our time 609 a.m. These, these shots get taken when the idea then there's objects in the sky and you got brightness here and here and here and here you got constellations moving in let me see if I can zoom it in so you can see it better we'll go to 400 and uh, it's only gonna do that it's gonna pop me the other screen so I gotta go to it try to pull it in that's the Sun down there and this is not the Sun well the Sun daylight is on this shot because this is during the daytime because we're on live view okay so there is stuff showing up during the daytime on fireball okay so if you go outside and take a look there is stuff showing up during the day now they have a painter a pointer or something on this one shot at that is uh, Huntsville I would like to see them get rid of that but uh, either that or that's our dark we actually have a dark black light object but let's check that out I'm going to show you the idea going back to IE last video this stuff is dancing around by the Sun folks and that the area that it covers is a humongous area folks okay so and it's not satellites don't let them fool you that it's satellites and taking a picture of another damn satellite it is not ladies and gentlemen these things are too goddamn big to be satellites okay they're planets okay there's no goddamn way that they're satellites look at the size and that's bullshit okay now if they try to say that they will it magnifies it in space no it doesn't okay we've got these massive objects here more than likely super giant objects okay and this is light from outer space who knows where and how far away from it's traveled and the idea uh, I'm going to show you another shot of down at Casey's webcam and show you these light this here and others are getting apported and show, seeing down at Casey now you're gonna say what am I seeing but there it is it's right here you get and see the cross and the V okay you are actually seeing this light propagated coming by earth okay that's the same stuff that goes by the Sun okay you, you see these streaks it's not weather it's light from outer space from the supergiants and other things anything 360 degrees of all the universes that's coming by coming by the Sun and it's coming by earth this is the South Pole Antarctic area folks okay even in the black darkness you see it either in light or during the day you see it in dark i.e. darkness these are objects that are getting put down to earth by light from outer space folks these are not human beings dancing around out there on the snow okay we've zoomed in on them that's not human beings folks these are just little thin stakes out there these are light objects you can zoom in on them they pop in and out on the time frames of the videos down there okay so remember these light streaks are actually there you can check this out and go back and stare at this and zoom this in on your screen as much as you can and you will see that this is the same light streaks and the most important key is to, to prove it is the idea check this V right here that I'm inside of okay just like a vaginal cavity check that out bam okay you see that V there and then these other lights and then check out the Sun and folks on these videos it's pretty much impregnated into the camera so you can always trust this I'll show you a mistake that's human error or done on purpose and as you see the time and then that's our Centauri and Rigel Cantaris and stuff and it's headed south okay ships headed south and then you can see it before it comes up the objects that are coming up that are rotate around this those suns and the supergiants and so forth I caught this and I'll zoom in on it I end up zooming in on these objects there you go and you can see the other little planets rotating around it and yes this might be holograms and it's way far away but then again that is so clear that the idea that that looks like it's actually right there and not a hologram okay hologram when it hits the ground but not when it's up in the sky okay now we do see somewhat of a hologram of light when it rotates around 
and you're going to see some other amazing shots of later in this. If we check it, it's not no damn bird, folks. I'll zoom in on that. And that's not any part of the boat ship. And it's there. It's not been imposed in the picture. You can see that it's naturally in the shot. And I zoom in on it, folks. So there is a planet iced over. It very much looks like an iced over planet, like a planet or a rock has had some kind of ice or cloud matter. It look, really looks like ice buildup from space and melted down, and then that's all that's left of the, of the comet or asteroid that's coming down, folks. You can see it. That is planetary object there, and that is ice. So that could honestly be some comet that came along with all these ones that we're seeing. Okay, And that's very close to Earth. It's in a low trajectory. That's going to hit the ground, and someone's going to get an asteroid, a nice big golden asteroid, because it's cooled off. So they're going to be a massive piece out there somewhere. It's going to either hit the ocean in the Antarctic or land somewhere. And the Antarctic's massive, but you can see the height that that's still going to go a long damn ways, okay? So there's other objects up there way far away in front of Rigel Cantaris A and B. And there's the V lights, folks. See, it even projects the Vs off, and there's a planet there inside that vaginal cavity of that V getting impregnated onto the water, okay? That's not just a school of fish, ladies and gentlemen. That is a V from up out in the space, and you can see the V right there. I'm not even putting my pointer up there. You see that box up there? Well, it's a diamond. It's a diamond V, and look what it does, and it impregnates on down to this. And that came from that, folks. Check the clocks. Okay? And then there's this dark matter. We're getting the dark light, and you get stuff from that, too. And also, this here is the same stuff that you see, and that's why I'm saying that the weather that you see at Casey is not weather it is actually impregnations of even though they got a dark clover if you see these dark clouds up there it's not s steam or anything coming off a motor that's actual prisms in space being seen down there folks it's freaking people out that's why all the marines went to australia and that's why in the biblical times it's recorded and so forth in all old histories that the idea they stuff in the skies like witches okay and there's a guy who had a, a, a shot of a can uh 400 days or something like that i think of the sun or something Okay, so the idea that you can see that this is a sun coming, coming across and rising every day in his shots, and you can see that there's stuff that gets in front of the sun. And also what's freaky is either he had the film um, impregnated or something on the back of the can, or there's some kind of message from outer space, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm not shitting you because look at this writing. There is something there. Okay. Now those are objects that get in front of the sun and you can see it, that this guy had this thing at space weather and he puts a can out, puts a pinhole in it, puts film in there and it records everything within a time lapse. It's just a very, very slow time lapse picture. This is the sun on its highest rise during the summertime. Lowest rise right around about now. The idea that it's closest to or farthest away from us, low in the south. Okay. So summertime sun up there on the top, and then the, all, these dark spots are either cloudy days or objects that get in front of the sun. And as you can see in the summertime, that we don't have that damn many cloudy days, so the idea that there's been a lot of objects in front of the sun, okay? And then the lower part is the winter time, okay? So that's like a 400-day shot of the, of the sun that he took, okay? So sharing for educational purposes and so forth and there we go is the idea that it's still just right now the 16 UTC and I could be wrong on that because the idea that I haven't refreshed the, I'm not going to refresh the earthquake thing right now maybe I what the hell I will I'll refresh the earthquake and we'll hit now and it'll give us the up-to-date time on the UTC and it looks like we've had a big quake and southernly it looks like oh, there was one it looks like a 5.0 just before this 4.9 down in Brazil okay so quickly, we'll take you to the Brazil, and there's our aurora, and you can see our axis moving so much. Now, that's massive, folks. So that's the idea of the change of where you see Rigel Cantaris and Proximi Centauri and Rigel Cantaris A, or whatever's from the supergiants. And you can see as we go down, Brazil was the deal of the idea of the low, thin pressure, the high pressure, which makes the atmosphere thin, and then the rays get through. And more than likely, this is Lovejoy or Mercury. Mercury could be on fire, or it's Lovejoy moving away. Either, either, it's one or both of them, both of them, okay? Because Mercury got a nice blast, okay? And Lovejoy's moving away hella fast, so it should already be out of the shots. When we see it out of the shots on all the other ones, so the idea that it's pretty much goddamn well must be Mercury. And I'll, the idea also is we always look at this to be able to make sure that we know where the satellite's at and where Mercury's in a box. They're normally supposed to be just round. they got a box around it. And there's our satellites. There's Earth back here.
And the date and time on that CME right there probably blew out the transformer in San Francisco. Much more info in the other video.